your shoulder's been hurting you for about two weeks. Uh, you head to your orthopedist's office. You're about 50 years old, 45 years old. You're pretty active. Your shoulder's been hurting you for a while. You ask for an MRI, and guess what? You get it. Uh, your MRI comes back. You have a labral tear. And perhaps your surgeon is recommending an operation. Folks, I'm Howard Lux. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Westchester County, New York. Uh, I've been in a sports medicine trained orthopedic surgeon for more than 20 years. Uh, I've been helping out people online uh, for about 15 of those years. Between YouTube and my website, we've helped millions of you hopefully understand uh, the technical details of what's going on and what might need to be fixed and what doesn't. Today we're going to talk about labral tear. So to understand what the labrum is, we need to talk a little bit about anatomy. The labrum is a cartilage disc that is found within the shoulder. The shoulder is considered a ball and socket joint. The ball is a lot larger than the socket. So you need to think about a golf ball sitting on a golf tee. So in order to enhance the stability or the ability of that ball to stay on the tee, imagine that there's a washer uh, around the golf tee, sort of makes it a little wider, makes it a little deeper, makes it a little more of a snug fit so that ball stays on top of the golf tee. That's the labrum, that washer. Uh, the labrum has a fairly important function. That function diminishes as we get older. So we're going to be talking about the adult shoulder now. We're talking about people 35 and up. We're not talking about your teenagers who may have suffered a labral tear from a sports injury. If we look at MRIs in normal people, that's people without shoulder pain, and we MRI, let's say 100 people, we MRI their shoulder, what percent of them are going to have a labral tear? You're thinking it's a very small number, but it's not. Um, obviously, that's why I asked the question. The number gets progressively larger as we age to the point where over the age of 65 or 70, that probably 90% of you have a labral tear. What's going on? Well, the labrum is actually wearing out. You know, we put our shoulder through a lot. Uh, there's a few million cycles or movements. Uh, we push weight, we lift weights, we do various activities. We're active in overhead sports. And the labrum starts to degenerate or fray. And the radiologist may call that age appropriate degeneration a tear. Now, <laughs> don't get upset. Um, just because a piece of us is torn uh, doesn't mean that you're looking at an operation. And we'll put it out here right now, the vast, vast majority of label tears in the adult shoulder do not require surgery. It's not going to lead to arthritis. It's not going to get worse, uh, or it has a very, very small chance of getting worse. And there's a really good chance that you're getting back to uh, your sports without surgery on a label tear. And perhaps most importantly, most of the recent research shows that uh, if you do have shoulder pain, uh, the labrum is probably not the cause and the pain is coming from something else. So we have different parts of our labrum. Uh, we have the top, right? the top of our shoulder. A tear in that area is unique. We call uh, labral tears in that area a slap lesion, S-L-A-P. Slap lesion stands for superior labrum anterior to posterior. So a tear of the top of the labrum from front to back, to put it in very simple language. Now, in overhead athletes and throwers, uh, volleyball players and swimmers, these can be a problem in kids, but even in kids, we like to avoid surgery because the results of surgery for slap lesions is just not good. Now, many adults are going to have slap lesions in the shoulder as a normal consequence of aging. I'm gonna say that again. Many adults are going to have slap tears in their shoulder as a normal consequence of aging. 
if a uh, slap tear shows up on your shoulder and you have shoulder pain, there is a very small chance that this is the cause of your shoulder pain. And we as we've talked about in other videos, the most common causes of shoulder pain in the adult shoulder is due to the rotator cuff. So rotator cuff tendinosis, where it's starting to fray, or what the radiologist might call a partial tear, and bursitis. So back to labral tears. The front of the labrum, we call the anterior labrum. That's where a very important ligament attaches. And if people dislocate their shoulders, then that labrum might tear. But as we get older and our other tissues stiffen, the chance of redislocation drops very, very low. So we never operate on a first time shoulder dislocation in an adult unless you're a rock climber, a mountain climber, a kayaker, a tree surgeon, a roofer, etc. You don't want your second dislocation to mean your uh, fall to your death. So uh, since most of us do not fit in those classifications, uh, we wait until you have a second dislocation before we consider labral surgery. And as I just said, uh, the risk of redislocation is well under 5%. So we're not going to operate on the labrum of a first time dislocator as long as your rotator cuff is okay. Posterior labral tears or tears in the back of the labrum are also very common. And when those occur, sometimes they also uh, cause a paralabral cyst. So let's break that down. Paralabral means next to the labrum, and a cyst is simply a fluid-filled sac. So if the labrum uh, is torn, then the fluid that's inside your joint can escape out through that tear, form this cyst or a fluid-filled pocket. Sometimes that cyst pushes on a nerve. Uh, that nerve is called the suprascapular nerve, and that can cause either pain or potentially weakness. Uh, there are many of you who are walking around with paralabral cysts due to a posterior labral tear, and you don't even know it. Uh, like other labral tears, very few require surgery uh, unless that cyst really starts to bother you or cause significant weakness that affects your ability to perform various activities. So, Bottom line is many of you are going to have labral tears on your shoulder, you on an MRI of your shoulder. So bottom line, if you go uh, to the physician's office uh, for shoulder pain and an MRI is performed, there's a very significant chance that a labral tear is going to be identified. Now, if you did not have an injury, I can assure you that labral tear was there before your shoulder started bothering you. Again, most labral tears are a normal consequence of aging. Uh, there's a good chance that the labral tear is not the source of your pain. If you're being told that you need surgery because of your labral tear, you should seek a second opinion. Now, there are uh, certain people where we do consider that the labrum might be the source of your pain. And that's particularly with a large, complex, loose, superior labral tears or slap lesions. Repairing those tears is not the surgical procedure that you require um, if we believe that is the source of your pain. Fixing those tears in adults it typically results in a stiff, painful shoulder and the repair does not work. Um, what we typically perform in these situations is a procedure called a biceps tenodesis. Uh, what that involves is repositioning your biceps and re-anchoring it to the front of your arm bone or the humerus. The reason why we pick on the biceps is because the biceps tendon actually comes all the way up your arm goes deep into the shoulder and attaches to the superior labrum. So if the superior labrum is torn and we think it's the cause of your pain, which should not be the case for the majority of you, then we're going to detach that biceps and reattach it in the front of your arm. 
biceps tenodesis has a much higher chance of success when treating a symptomatic or bothersome slap lesion. So I hope we learned a little about label tears today. I hope you understood that the uh, vast majority of you, uh, for the vast majority of you, the label tear is not the cause of your pain. And certainly for the vast majority of you, surgery is not the answer for your label tear. And if you have any questions, leave them in the post and the box below. Please click the subscribe button so you can get our videos as soon as uh, they're done. And I uh, thank you for being here. Take care. Bye.